Here's a pretty little spleenwort with tight rosettes of small, narrow fronds. The purple-brown stems, stipes and rachises, give the fern its maidenhair moniker. Not as common here as some less fussy ferns, maidenhair spleenwort is a lithophyte, preferring to live on the shady damp faces and crevices of rock-walled streams. Or by taking advantage of little footholds and clefts in rocks. The evergreen fern seems able to grow where other plants can't. Here it thrives below ground level. Let's zoom in on that pretty narrow frond and look at its parts. First, this is a small fern, here compared to a penny. From an imaginary solid blade, just one cut makes the penny, which with some bumpy edge work produces a nearly round, somewhat variable, crenate look. Somewhat larger mid-frond penny make it slightly wider there. Here, with a leaf tipped over, we note the thick mature spore aggregates. Spleenworts, ferns in the genus Asplenium, are known for this elongate, thick dash of spores. The fern does what is called portion leaf fall. A second year frond loses some of its upper penny. Next year, some of the remaining lower penny fall off. Then, for a few years, only the long purple-brown stems persist like strands of hair. These may help support future fronds. There's something eye-catching about maidenhair spleenwort, a difference from other ferns, the tiny green penny like tatted lacework off of purple threads, or like an embroidered flourish on a mossy rock, here between two more common but also pretty ferns. Plants like these need to be discovered where they like to be. Searching for them will draw you to places full of natural beauty. So take a walk, make a treasure hunt of ferns, follow a creek around that next bend, check the galleries and crevices of rock-walled streams. You may find hanging gardens like these, but you'll always get more out of nature than you expected. <laughs>